Welcome! In this video I'll show you how to solve problem 2.33 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now this problem states the following, it says consider the step function potential which is the potential where the potential is zero if x is less than zero and v0 if x is greater than zero. So basically this potential looks like this. So the potential is zero up to x equals zero and then you jump up to some value v0. So that is the shape of the potential. Now, this differs from what we have seen before in that this is now v0 until infinity. We used to have cases where this dropped off to zero again, but that is no longer the case. So we will see how this differs and it's actually going to be a very important difference. So what we are asked to do is, first of all, find the reflection coefficient, not the transmission coefficient, um, for the case e smaller than v0, and then for the case e greater than v0. And then um, we have this, so we say, for a potential such as this, that doesn't go back to zero, to the right of the barrier, the transmission coefficient is not simply, um, there it is not really legible, uh, it is not simple, the absolute value of the modules of f squared divided by a squared which is what we had before. Um, because the transmitted wave travels at a different speed. And we have to show that this is now the shape of the trans transmission coefficient. Um, for, of course, e greater than zero, and then we will need to know what happens for e smaller than v0. And finally, d for e greater than v0, calculate the transmission coefficient for the step potential and check that t plus r equals one. Okay, um, so let's start off. So first we have to calculate the reflection coefficient for e smaller than v0. Now this is precisely the same as what we have done in previous videos. There is no difference, at least for now. So all we have to do, part A, is that we have to start by building, right? There are three steps, as you might recall. First, we build our wave function, build wave function for every region. Then we have to apply border conditions, border conditions. And three, we have to solve this system of equations for whatever it is that we're looking for. In this case, we need to find b over a. In previous videos, we have found f over a. Okay? Okay, so let's go. Build the wave function for the case e smaller than v0. So we have two regions, right? We have region one, which is going to be here, where the potential is zero and region two. So for the potential zero, we have done this many, many, many times. Uh, in that case, so psi one, this is simply traveling waves, right? A, E, I, K, X, plus this, re this reflected wave. Now for region two, we have to solve the Schrodinger equation. So this is for region two. We have to solve the Schrodinger equation um, for the potential v0, so v0 psi equal to e psi. So as, as always, right, we put everything to the right hand side, we get d squared psi dx squared, and we get this very familiar form. So here we have e minus v0, but then a minus sign. So we get v0 minus e. And then this is divided by h bar squared times 2m psi. And we are in the case in which e is smaller than v0. So for that reason, this right here is going to be real. Okay, so we know how to solve this. This is going to be either cosines or exponentials, um, but as we have discussed, it is more convenient to use exponentials as you will see uh, immediately. So the solutions of this are of the forms or for psi two. Um, we can call this thing right here L squared, right? So that means that L is equal to 2m v0 minus e over h, and this is square root. And um, just to make it clear, previously, k was 2me over h bar. Okay, so k is the same as previously, um, l, we have, our solutions will be the form of some constant, so c times e to the lx, plus some other constant e to the minus lx. However, as x goes to infinity, this one will blow up, right? E goes to infinity and we can't have something that is non-normalizable. So for that reason, we have to take C equals zero and we are left with 
d e to the minus l x. So this right here is our wave function for region two. So that means that our wave function overall is going to be a e i k x plus b e minus i k x for x smaller than zero. And then we have d e to the minus l x for x greater or equal to zero. Of course, uh, when it is exactly zero, both of these are the same. Um, and that's in fact the border condition that we have to apply right now. So step number two, right, um, apply border conditions. So apply border conditions. The border conditions are continuity of the wave function and continuity of the first derivative of the wave function. So doing that, we need that the wave function in region one, a e i k x, evaluated at x equals zero, so this thing goes away, plus b times the exponential to the zero, which is one, so we get b, has to be equal to d times e to the zero, which is also one. So the first condition gives us a plus b equals d. And now for the derivative, we get i k a times the exponential to the zeroth power, which is one, and then we get minus i k b times the exponential that is one, and then minus l d. So these are our two equations for this system. And now, what is our goal? Our goal is to find b over a, because the reflection coefficient is b over a modulus squared. So, um, how, what is the easiest way to find b over a? Well, we don't need d, so we want to eliminate d from both equations. So if we multiply the first equation by l, now you can see that if we simply add them together, the d parts will cancel out. And that will give us an equation in terms of, of only a and b. So let's add them together. So we get a times l plus i k, right, from adding these two. From adding these two, we get b times l minus i k. And on the right hand side, we get zero. Um, so let's put any of these to the right hand side. I'm going to put b to the right hand side. So we get l plus i k is equal to b times, and now I flip it, e k, i k minus l. And now we want b over, l, b over a, right? So b over a is. Um, let's see, we divide by this, so we get L plus I K divided by L, no, I K minus L. And now we can find the reflection coefficient by squaring this. So we get B squared over A squared. And this is, um, let's see, L squared plus k squared, right? The modulus squared is going to be the real part squared plus the complex part squared. And then we get k squared plus l squared, which is one. And this is a pretty interesting result because here we get that there is no real penetration, okay? So there will be no transmission coefficient because r, r plus t has to be equal to one and r already is one. So of course, this will immediately tell us that the transmission co coefficient is going to be zero for this case. There we go. Um, we wish to do part B now, which is the same thing, but for the case E greater than V0. So for E greater than V0, once again, we need to solve the Schrodinger equation for both um, parts of relevance. The first one, right, the first section for X smaller than zero is going to be the same. So we have the same wave function in region one. But now we have that the energy is greater than the potential. So we will have a scattering state. So we immediately can see, or if you are more experienced, maybe if not, I'll show you that we will have something of the form I L X, but I I'll show you anyways. So the Schrodinger equation, of course, will tell us that we have something like this, right? So again, we isolate everything, we, we get d squared psi dx squared, and let's see, we have e minus v0, which turns into v0 minus e, so v0 minus e, 
and this is over h bar squared and 2m. But this time, the energy is greater than v0. So for that reason, we may want to write this as, you know, with a minus sign in front, just to make it like super abundant, um, that this thing right here is going to be negative. So if we take the square root, right, if we define this to be L, L will be the square root of something negative, 2m v0 minus e, uh, h bar squared. So the way that we used to solve this, right, is to take the minus sign outside. Basically, we put the minus L squared so that L is defined as 2M. And then instead of V minus uh, e, V0 minus E, we get E minus V0. Um, so that is how, you know, we used to do this. This is nothing new. Um, again, if this is in any way, shape or form confusing, you need to go back a few videos because this is something you have to be able to understand. Okay, we went into this in depth before. And again, I, I encourage you, if you are not sure, you need to study this more because you will not be able to uh, get away with not knowing this in your tests, okay? Okay, so this is L. And for this reason, the solutions are going to be uh, for region two of the form C, E, I, K, X, plus D, E, minus I, K, X. But we only have a wave traveling to the right so this one does, doesn't make any physical sense because it is traveling to the left and that's impossible. You, you can't have a wave traveling to the left in this region caused by, if you're traveling like this, there's no way that you would get a wave traveling like this. Um, so that's why that, that part doesn't make any sense. We are only left with this EIKX part. So that is our wave function, C, E, I, and sorry, not K, but L. That's, I'm sorry. So L, X. And this is x greater or equal to zero. Okay, so now we apply border conditions. So border conditions, we need that this thing evaluated at zero has to be the same as this thing evaluated at zero. So the first part is, is the same as before, a plus b equals c. Now with the derivatives, we get i k a plus, sorry, minus i k b is equal to i l c. The exponentials, of course, are uh, one because they are evaluated at zero. And we have to now solve this system of equation for b over a. So again, let's get rid of c. Now, you may notice that we can simply divide by e and we get rid of it. So now if we multiply the first equation by k, sorry, not by k, but by l, then we can simply subtract equation two from equation one and we get rid of c. So in that case, we get a, then l minus k plus b, l plus k. So again, here we can find b over a. Um, let's see, we need to put this to the right-hand side and we get a k minus l. So we get k minus l over l plus k. And now we square this right, we square this, and we get k minus l squared, k plus l squared. I'm just writing it like this to make it a bit more apparent. Now, in principle, we are finished, and we could plug in um, the values for k and l, right, l here and k is here. We could just plug them in, um, but in order to simplify this expression further, um, it is convenient to apply a trick. Why? Because because of the expressions that we have, we have 2me minus v0 and k is 2me. So if we add them together, nothing happens, right? If, if I mean, we can't do much with k plus l, for example. If we have k minus l, at least some things may end up canceling out or something, but we need to have something squared so that the square root goes away and we can actually simplify them. So for that reason, we do a trick, which is to multiply and divide by k minus l squared. Why? Because that way, down here, we're going to get k plus l times k minus l squared, which is simply k squared minus l squared squared. 
And that is something that we can work with. Now, of course, this does mean that we are left with k minus l to the fourth power in the numerator, um, but we can simplify this a lot more anyways. So let's find each one of these quantities. Now, k minus l, um, this thing right here, let's see. So k minus l, this is square root of 2me over h bar minus square root of 2m was it e minus v0? Yes. e minus v0, um, square root, h bar. Now this would be square root of 2m over h bar, factor of the square root of e minus square root of e minus v0. And k squared minus l squared, this is going to be 2m e, over h bar squared minus 2m e minus v0 over h bar squared. And now the e's cancel out, so we are left with 2m v0 over h bar squared. Um, so we can now plug this in. We can plug it in here or maybe down here so that it's a bit less chaotic. So b over a squared, which is, of course, our reflection coefficient, um, this will be, now we have square root of 2m over h bar, and we want to elevate this to the fourth power. So we get 2m squared h bar to the fourth power, factor of the square root of e minus square root of e minus v0, and all of this divided by um, 2mv0, all of this squared, divided by h bar to the fourth power. So the 2ms and h bar squares cancel out. And we are left with square root of, oh, this is to the fourth power, by the way, square root of e minus square root of e minus v0 to the fourth power, divided by v0 squared. So this is the reflection coefficient. This is the most that we can simplify it. Okay, let's continue. Um, then we are asked to, we say, for this potential that does not go back to zero, we need to find the expression for the transmission coefficient. We need to prove this thing right here. Now that's not going to be difficult. So, I mean, it is conceptually a bit challenging perhaps, um, but it is not the, the most difficult mathematically. What we have to consider is that the probability current, right, the probability current J is what uh, ends up determining the transmission coefficient. So the T that we were uh, finding before was actually a particular case of this. So the, the transmission coefficient is actually the, the ratio of the transmitted probability current over the incident probability current. And what is the probability current? It is simply the probability of finding our particular particle in that state. So in this case, um, it, it is the amplitude of the transmitted particle, which it might be C or F, it doesn't matter. It depends what you called it. Um, in this case, we called it, I think, C in one problem and D in the other, but it's it just, it's important that you re remember the meaning, um, times the velocity of the particle. And this is, of course, divided by the incident probability the current, which is the probability of finding the particle in that state times the velocity of that particle. Now, what is the velocity? Now, as we saw uh, at the beginning, when we were talking about free particles, the quantum velocity for the wave packet is the square root of E over 2m, right? The energy of the particle over 2m. So we know that the energy of the particle in the transmitted region is square root of E minus V0, right, for this particular case. And the energy of the incident particle is simply square root of E. And both have the same mass, so the 2m cancels out, right? We would have square root of 2m here and square root of 2m here, so they cancel out easily. And this is the expression, right? It's the same as before, except it's the same as this, except that instead of calling it F, we called it C. Um, because that is what we used for our wave function here, right? I could have called it F. It, it doesn't matter. It's just a name. So there we go. It's proven. 
Um, so now what we want to do, um, they, they ask us, okay, what happens in the case for when the energy is less than the potential? Well, in that case, we already saw it. There is no transmission, right? There is not enough energy in the particle to go through the infinite barrier, right? Tunneling can happen if it was a finite barrier, but in this case, it's infinite, so no tunneling can happen. So um, the transmission coefficient in that case is zero. Pretty easy. Now D, in the case where the energy is greater, we want to calculate the transmission coefficient for the step potential and check that T plus R is equal to one. So we go back to this set of equations. And from here, we now want to get rid not of, of C, but of B. And to do that, we simply multiply. Um, so we want to get rid of B, so we multiply by K. And now we can add them together and we get rid of B. So let's see, if we do that, we get um, 2AK. So let me just write it down here. We will zoom in later. So 2AK, this is equal to C times K plus L. So from here, the ratio C over A is going to be, let's see, so C over A, um, we get 2K over K plus L. And now if we square this, we get 4K squared over K plus L squared. Um, so now, if we want to find a more explicit version of this, you could just plug in the values for K squared and L squared, but that is not going to be particularly uh, nice looking. So what I recommend you do um, is the same as before. We have K plus L, but we know that K plus L uh, doesn't simplify in any nice way. So we can multiply by k minus l squared, both in the numerator and the denominator, and that way, down here, we will get, just as before, k squared minus l squared squared, which we already know what it is. So k squared minus l squared squared, um, here, we found to be this thing squared. So 2m over v0, so for m squared over h bar to the fourth power times v0 squared. And then we have four times k, which is, so k squared, which is 2me over h bar squared times k minus l, which is right here, squared. So we get another 2m over h bar squared, so times 2m over h bar squared times the square root of e minus the square root of e minus v0. And here, the for this, let's see, this, 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 this cancels out with this and this. So we are left with 4 square root of e minus square root of e minus v0 divided by v0 squared and times e. And now, of course, this is simply the ratio um, C, sorry, C over A squared. But the transmission coefficient, as we just saw, has to be multiplied by E minus V0. Um, so let's do that. So we multiply by the square root of E. So this E turns into a square root, right? We have E divided by the square root of E, which is simply square root of E times square root of E minus V0. And there we go. This is the reflection coefficient, the transmission coefficient. Okay, this is the transmission coefficient. And now we have to check that r plus t is equal to one. So you could just add these two expressions together. Um, this is r, right? But that would be a nightmare because you have to expand this thing to the fourth power. I did it before this video. Um, you can do it, but it is annoying. There's a much better way, and I'm going to use that. So keep in mind that r was this thing, k minus l squared over k plus l squared. So r was k minus l squared divided by k plus l squared. And t, as we now saw, is, um, let's take a look, it is this thing. So for k squared divided by k plus l squared times the square root of e minus v0 divided by e. But this is simply the ratio 
of, because keep in mind, k is square root of 2me, and l is, well, over h bar, and l is, is 2m e minus v0 over h bar. So if you divide l over k, you get this exact thing. So l over k. And, you know, the k's cancel out partially, and we get 4kl here. And now we can, sim so this is r plus t. So now we expand this, so we get k squared minus 2kl plus l squared plus 4kl divided by k plus l squared. And here, you know, this 4kl and this minus 2kl cancel out partially, and we get plus 2kl. And now we can recombine this into k plus l squared divided by k plus l squared, which is 1. And there we go. We just proved it. So this is problem um, 2.33. As you see, there isn't anything new. It is simply what we have used before. Um, this part of the transmission coefficient uh, was uh, new, I guess. But everything else is the same as we have done before.